welcome 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 to your soulful morning your spiritual morning welcome to a wonderful inward world let's enjoy this beautiful day and begin it yet again with our breath helping us all center balance align so let's be grateful to this beautiful breath that we breathe in and this wonderful exit that the breath takes life has been so beautiful full of blessings it tends to show us an area where we're not ready for it comes with lock knocks and shocks of life but in everything that happens there's always a reason may we all get the strength the understanding the wisdom to see the reason to understand the lessons that that knock and shock of life has come to teach all of us and for this let's be mindful of our breath alongside practicing the lotus of gratitude wherein we practice 10 gratitude for the last 10 for the last 24 hours that we have lived loved and given probably something to somebody worth while but let's be grateful let's count the gratitude despite adversities there are so many things that we can be grateful for and let's learn that lesson again and again that gratitude is the big, biggest multiplier may we keep being grateful keep growing keep evolving in this wonderful world of gratitude and now once again let's practice suham suham that will help us get many answers that we may have i am one with all of life and all of life is one with me i am the universe i ask and i should be given with this beautiful practice let's start practicing suham again i must remind everybody that suham means who am i shunya then this this is between so and ham there's shunya there's space which means it strengthens our power to hearing to feeling and then we do that then we are going inside the so inhale exhale hum even between inhale and exhale there is a gap so when we practice soham we are practicing the art of breathing we are practicing the art of listening in the present being in the present making the space expansive and then when we are saying hum we are being given answers with both hands when the, when we you know when we are doing that till yesterday we were practicing the right right hand that the middle finger went touched our um our tilly our palms and thumb over uh, thumb on top of that right so when we do this our world open 
today onwards we'll practice it with both of our hands even the left hand the middle finger goes touches your palm and the thumb crosses over it when we do this we are being open to the universe for all the answers to get downloaded and it's really really powerful and for this again i'm going to reiterate we're going to be practicing it in sets of 5 with five sohams in each and again <clears throat> i'm going to be prompting you so that we are all in this together so in the first set today is the last day that i'm going to explain in detail tomorrow onwards we'll just practice in the first set we begin by noticing the vibration and the sound quality that we are uh jo ucharan ho rahe which we are uh, chanting of the so and the hum the flow state that we will be forming in and that's going to have in move from tomorrow because tomorrow we will be in complete alignment without the instructions so we are noticing the vibration and the sound quality of the in breath and the out breath we listen to the so that we sound and the the sound that we make after the inhalation during the inhalation and the hum sound during the exhalations one once we've settled in our this rhythm an automatic rhythm will follow and we can then bring our attention to the pause between breaths the pause also has a further pause why you breathe in pause you breathe out pause so when you're breathing in you sing so and you're expanding your stomach then you're breathing out you're saying hum and in between there's a pause so now we are getting aware of that pause so when we breathe in and breathe out we always see the pause and now in this pause lies the world in this pause we are going to be not only really silent but we are, when our mind wanders we'll bring it back but what we have to also do in, in this silence is the first five sounds we are just observing the pause and the next five we are noticing any kind of physical discomfort or disease in our bodies in the third we will be noticing any kind of mental distress anxiety depression or whatever you know mental body in the third set we are sorry yeah so the first we are observing second physical discomfort third mental discomfort fourth any external discomfort see that observe that are you having any dress, distress ex ex externally and the fifth we are healing any of the three above that we may have observed and this my dear friends is therapeutic and healing at every day level let's start a beautiful practice of soham take a deep breath in so um you know how to follow my breath you have to follow your own pattern so um mudras please be careful of your mudras so um so so um now time to observe the physical discomfort so um so um so um so 
Hum. In this set, we're going to be observing any mental distress, any mental anxiety, depression. So, um, so, um, so, um, Now, any external distress. So, um, so, um, so. So, um, so, um, now in the pause, that healing energy from our body into our body, whether it's mental body, emotional body, physical body. Wherever you saw the discomfort, the distress, we release that. So, um, so, um, So, um, so, um, so, um, And now we fold a hand in gratitude and be in silence for a minute. Dear masters, angels, guardians, spirit guides, we bow our, hand, our heads in gratitude to all you light beings for helping us observe our breath, for helping us observe the shunya, the pause, the break, for helping us observe what is stored in our body, sometimes physical, sometimes mental, sometimes auric. And we thank you in helping us heal our own selves every single day. And in the process, with the chanting of the Soham, you help us get all the answers that are there to be received. Ask and we shall be given. So when you ask any questions, and when you sit in sadhana, sadhana which means man ko saad ki bechna, then the answers come downloading. And we thank you for this incredible gift of living life to its fullest possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now dear Golanos, let's expand our hands to on the heart level in her abandonment's pose and affirm I I'm open and receptive to all the divine intervention 
to all the magical synchronicities that are helping me lead a life to the fullest, helping me realize my soul's purpose, helping me become a better version of myself, helping me to serve others with unconditional love and sharing my light right here, right now. And so it is. Once again, let's fold our hands in gratitude and be just so grateful. And now let's drop our hands together. Let's our entire body, especially if any body part has been hurting too much, or suppose if you've had any mental thing, put your hand a little longer on your brain, because balancing the brain is what we are now going to be working on. Let's just keep balancing our back. Lovely. And I thank you each for joining me in the sacred space of our meditation every morning. And now we come to a beautiful book. A book through time into healing. Our seventh book by Dr. Brian Wise in our morning series where we're learning to go beyond the ordinary. And today we're going to be reading chapter number four. Healing the mind by healing the, healing the body by healing the mind. So all of us here gathered here in the morning, we know, thanks to Louise Hay's teaching, that every dis-ease that happens in the body is due to a lack of ease in our mental body. Emotionally, when we're not sound, it manifests into some kind of dis-ease in the body. Now, now that we know the reason why it comes, we also know that Louise Hay has taught us affirmations so we can change our mindset and release the dis-ease by bringing the body into ease. Today, we're going to be reading a perspective from Dr. Brian Wise about the body and the mind healing. Connect, right? So let's go for it. Elaine is a respected psychologist in the Miami area. She came to me if past, she came to me to see me if past life therapy could alleviate a chronic physical condition. For years, Elaine had suffered intermittent, excruciating pain in her neck, shoulders, and upper back. During the initial review, I discovered that Elaine also had a lifelong terror of heights, a monosymptomatic or single symptom phobia. This is how Elaine later described her experience during hypnosis and what happened to her life as a result. I saw a lot of darkness, blackness, and I realized that I was blindfolded. And then I saw myself from the outside. I was standing on top of a tower, one of those castle towers made of stone. My hands were tied behind my back. I was in my early 20s and I knew that I was a soldier on the side that, had, that I had lost the battle. Then I felt an excruciating pain in my back. I could feel my teeth gritting and my arms stiffen and my fists, fists, fists clench. I was being lanced. I could feel the lance in my back, but I was defiant. I wasn't going to scream. And then I felt myself falling and felt the water of the most moat closing around me. I've always been terrified of heights and drowning. When I came out of it, I was still shaken and I spent a couple of days in agony. I couldn't even touch my facial bones. The pain was so great. But the next morning when I woke up, I thought something's different, something's very different. It was diff what was different was that Elaine's back pain and a fear of heights had disappeared. In a subsequent session, Elaine vividly re-experienced re a lifetime in medieval France. In this lifetime, Elaine had been an impoverished, dispirited, and hopeless male in his 20s. This man lacked the courage to be different, to speak out, to emerge out from his rut and change his life, uh, his lot in life. Dispassionately, Elaine described the filthy brown rags that had been the man's only clothes. Eventually, the authorities had been the man's only. Uh, eventually, the authorities wrongly accused Elaine of a crime she did not commit, but a scapegoat was needed, so Elaine was arrested and hanged in public. She went to the gallows, grieving and mired in her hopelessness, almost relieved to be leaving this wretched existence. After the session, her chronic neck neck pain disappeared. So did something else. 
As a result of her experiences in the French lifetime, Elaine was able to pinpoint a new area for emotional growth in the patient. She saw that experiences then had influenced her current reluctance to speak out and take risks. Elaine decided to take the plunge. She risked a professional reputation by telling newspaper reporters and other therapists about her remarkable experiences in her past lives. And this time, instead of being hanged in public, she was congratulated. Elaine's experience demonstrates how past aggression is expanding the repertoire of known techniques for accessing what has recently been dubbed the mind-body connection. Both old physical and old emotional cycles were broken in Elaine's therapy. Although she came to therapy for relief of physical symptoms, Elaine was not only able to rid herself of debilitating pain, but also a long-standing fear. As an additional bonus, she identified and pursued a new area of emotional growth for herself when she uncovered a block, the fear of speaking the truth, of which she had previously been unaware. During therapy, correct corrections were made between Elaine's mind and body that interacted synergistically. Playing, or playing off each other and opening new doorways of growth and wholeness until a new level of being well being emerged. It is well known that the mind can strongly influence the body, causing symptoms, disease, and even death. All physicians know of hospital patients who give up on their life for one reason or another. Despite the best medical treatments and technology available, these patients wither away and die. Patients who possess a strong will to live usually fare much better. We're just now in the process of defining the physical mechanisms of giving up and the will to live. These are the basic mechanisms of the mind-body connection, a connection that was made in a very healing way as Elaine shared her neck and back pain. In this chapter, we'll explore many more examples of the mind-body connection as it is made during past life therapy and many of the different ways it can heal physical ailments. Early data from Stanford University indicate that support groups significantly increase the quality and quantity of life in breast cancer patients. Harvard University researchers have found that some types of med meditation can prolong life in the elderly. In his excellent book, Head First, The Biology of Hope, Norman Cousins carefully documented work at UCLA and elsewhere that has helped to develop the new area of medical research known as uh, psychoneuroimmunology. Psychoneuroimmunology, the interaction between the mind, brain, and the immune system. Bernie Siegel, MD, has also described mind-body correlations and the profound healing potential that is accessed through the linkage to his best-selling books, Love, Medicine, Miracles, Peace, Love, and Healing. Research at Pennsylvania State University has shown that hypnosis can increase the quantity of certain white blood cells in the system. Numerous studies document correlations between improved athletic performance and visualization techniques. Many researchers and clinicians have used hypnosis to eliminate addictions to tobacco, food, and even to alcohol and hard drugs. Meditative techniques have also been proved effective in any cases. Past life therapy and hypnosis can also achieve some of these some of the same results. I've done hundreds of therapeutic path life regressions since my first experience with Catherine. I have seen the Uh, sound uh, the the Wi-Fi thing. Okay. Just le just let me know if it's okay now. It's okay. Your message would be nice and appreciated. I'm still not able to identify the exact mechanism of the physical cure that takes place as a result of the therapy. Although I do have some ideas, the cure might lie in the simple act of remembering and re-experiencing an initial trauma just as the act of re-examining a childhood trauma during conventional psychotherapy results in an emotional cure. Or the knowledge that the soul never dies, only the body does, could be a great healer. 
Healing may also occur as the patient acquires an understanding of the factors that precipitated the illness in the first place. Or the secret may lie in a combination of all of these processes, all of which are typical of past life therapy. Although I can only hypnotize, no, hypothesize about the reasons that past life recall heals, I can attest to the results of that recall. In my experience, I have found that past life regression under hypnosis can be an important part of the treatment, amelioration, and even the cure of certain chronic symptoms and illnesses, especially those affected by the functioning of the immune system and those that may have a psychosomatic component. Past life therapy is particularly effective in treating uh, musculoskeletal pains, headaches that do not respond to medication, allergies, asthma, and stress-induced or immune system-related conditions such as ulcers or arthritis. In some cases, it appears to improve cancerous lesions or tumors. Many patients of mine have been able to stop taking pain medicine for formerly debilitating conditions that they experienced pure past life therapy. It also resolves deep underlying emotional issues as the relationship of the emotions to the physical discomfort and its past life source is revealed. The medical exploration in this field is just beginning. However, it is safe to say that past life therapy must be seriously considered as a potent and cost-effective addition to a roster of effective holistic therapies, that is therapies that concentrate not on alleviating a single symptom or condition, but on healing the whole person, body, and mind. Wherever the secret lies, therapeutic effects and benefits can be startling. Jack is a 40-year-old cargo pilot who came to me for help with this cluster of physical and psychological symptoms. Physically, he suffered migraines, gouty arthritis, high blood pressure. Psychologically, Jack stored anger for weeks before suddenly venting his feeling in a densely approached rage. Jack had also suffered from a very particular monosymptomatic phobia. Every morning, as he buckled himself into his pilot's seat and taxied for takeoff, he'd anxiously and repeatedly look out of the window to make sure that his plane still had a right wing. Having been an Air Force pilot for years before he became a commercial pilot flyer, Jack was an extremely seasoned and responsible pilot. He had never experienced any emergency situation that could have caused his current anxiety. Yet every morning when he woke up, all he could think about was whether the wing of his plane was going to fall off that day. In therapy, Jack experienced a number of past lives in a combination of a classical regression and the key moment flow process. In his first session, Jack recalled a life as a cow hand in the Old West. In that lifetime, Jack died when he was crushed by a falling boulder as he rode his horse through a mountain pass. As he relived the death experience, Jack recalled the suffocating feeling. As the regression continued, Jack moved into a different life in a second key moment. He discovered that he had been a German Air Force pilot shot down by friendly fire over Germany in World War II. The friendly fire had blown away the right wing of the airplane. Jack died as a crippled craft plummeted to earth. As he re-experienced the death and the between-life stage that followed it, Jack also relived the terrible anger and frustration he had felt because of a mistake that had prematurely cost him his life and had forced him to abandon his young family. After the regression process, Jack felt elated, as if a huge weight had been lifted from him. Now he had an explanation for the irrational anguish he had been, re -experiencing, he'd been experiencing in his present lifetime. Within two weeks, he and I both noticed that his wing phobia had entirely disappeared. Finally, he was able to get into the cockpit without casting a terrible or terrified glance out of the right side of his plane. His anger about the pointlessness of the death also helped him begin to understand more about the source of his frequent rages. At Jack's condition, second session, he would decide to explore the origin of the gouty arthritis. Once in trance, Jack immediately slipped back into the key moment flow regression and recalled a prior lifetime when he suffered several bilateral keen injuries from running into a low fence. As a result of this accident, not only did he tear up both his knees, but he also endured serious infections and eventually atrophy of his lower legs. He never recovered fully and required care for the rest of his life. He had become angry and depressed and had an early demise. 
and how the connection between her current physical and emotional discomfort had been made. Next, Jack recalled an ancient lifetime in which an animal horn had been penetrated his head, pierced the occipital lobe of his brain, and emerged from his body just been under beneath, underneath his right eye, the site of his present migraines. Since that session, Jack has not had another migraine, although only time will tell if past life therapy has eliminated the chronic condition completely. There is a marked improvement in his level of well-being. His gout has also been lessened, and much of Jack's anger has been replaced with peacefulness. His values have changed since he had experienced some of his previous lifetimes, and his perspective in life and its meaning has widened. Now that his fear of death has been made to erode, the things that previously angered or enraged him seem silly, small, irrelevant. This is a common result for many patients who have undergone past life therapy. Selma is a 44-year-old woman who owns a printing business. Like Jack, Selma suffered from more than one chronic physical condition. Selma had a cancerous lesion and the vulva that had been removed several times but kept coming back. When she came to see me, she had been using a chemotherapy cream on the lesion with no effect. When we discussed her medical and psychological history, Selma related a number of physical and emotional challenges in her life. She suffered from allergies, skin rashes, and a history of stomach ulcers. At the age of 11 months, she had badly burned the skin on her left eye and had received one of the first skin grafts performed in America. Selma had numerous childhood surgeries on her thigh, accumulating a total of 500 stitches. After an operation she underwent at the age of 14, Selma's body finally reached, reacted to all the pharmaceuticals that had gone through her system by breaking out in pharma, by breaking out in an angry and painful red rash all over her body. After this, she became generally weakened, experienced more physical illnesses, and developed gen an intolerance to the sun. In addition, cancer ran in Selma's family. Her mother and her sister had died within the process to, within the previous two years. Her mother from brain cancer and her sister from cancer of the pancreas. And as a child, Selma had been sexually abused by an uncle. Despite her many physical and emotional hardships, Selma came into therapy with hope and confidence that she could turn her life around. In her first regression, Selma saw himself, uh, herself as a dark-haired boy of 13, apparently a resident of a feudal village. Selma entered the lifetime in the moment of death as armoured men on horseback pillaged and destroyed her village. One soldier stabbed her on the chest with a sword and she died instantly. Selma's spirit immediately left her body. As it did, she felt a wonderful feeling of floating, a feeling of peacefulness and relief at leaving an earthly existence. Selma then entered a centuries-ago lifetime in Holland and recounted how a relative living in his family's household had abused her sexually. She recognized a relative as the uncle who abused her in this life as well. The, sex, the factual deaths of these memories may have been hazy and fragmented, but the emotional content of the memories was very vivid and dramatic for Selma, particularly the memory of previous abuse. As we finished the session, Selma felt calm and composed, especially when reviewing the history of abuse with the Dutch man who was now her uncle. Selma experienced a great relief and clarity from being able to link these details together in a cause and effect pattern in her mind. As she discovered the pattern, she also seemed to free herself from some of the emotional residue of this traumatic childhood experience. Eight days later, when Selma arrived for her next session, she reported that a cancerous condition had improved. The formerly recalcitrant lesion had shrunk dramatically and had become much less sensitive. Selma also reported that in the interim, she had experienced a dream about an aunt of hers who had was burned to death at the age of 16. Many years before Selma was born, Selma bears a close resemblance to this aunt and family members tell her and photograph shows her that they even have birthmarks in common. Since dreaming is also a common method of past life recall, Selma and I discussed this dream being proceeding to the session. In the regression of that day, Selma recalled being a nurse on a large London hospital ward, probably in the 19th century. As she made her rounds, a soldier entered the room and she shot her in the stomach and the chest. The session was extremely emotional for Selma, who relieved the death experience before she floated upward. 
after this session, Selmar's ulcer began to improve. Once again, she experienced what was for her clarifying liberation for cause and effect. Both Jack and Selma were able to make the mind-body connection through past life recall. Both of them discovered that past life therapy can not only trigger the amelioration of physical conditions, but it can also heal emotional scars. In past life therapy, as the mind heals the body, the body can also heal, heal, heal the mind. Other physicians have contacted me to relate clinical vignettes about the patient's past life experiences. Dr. Robert Jarman of Spring Lake, New Jersey, wrote to me because he had a cancer patient who was like Catherine spontaneously regressed to a traumatic past life experience. This patient was also cured of her symptoms. <laughs> This particular case of Dr. Jarman's also illustrates how physical problems from past lives can carry over to the present lifetime. Dr. Jarman had been using hypnosis as a method of weight reduction for a Jewish woman in her mid-30s. After two months of therapy, his patient began experiencing severe lower abdominal pain. Thinking that her symptoms could be caused by an ectopic pregnancy, a life-threatening condition in which the fetus develops in the fallopian tubes instead of the uterus, he sent her to a gynecologist. The area near her right ovary was tender and swollen. Her menstrual periods had stopped, but the woman was not pregnant. All tests were negative. Five months passed and her symptoms persisted. During a hypnosis session, Dr. Jarman, working with her on a psychological problem, instructed her to go back to the time when your problems began. Her subconscious mind chose the gyne gynecological problem. Few months passed and the symptoms persisted. During a hypnosis session, Dr. Jarman, working with her on a psychological problem, instructed her to go back to the time when your problem began. Her subconscious mind chose a gynecological problem. He was flabbergasted when the woman described a scene from the Middle Ages in which she was 19 years old and five months pregnant. She was about to die because the baby was out of place. A priest and a doctor were present. She started speaking to me as if I were the priest. Dr. Jarman reported. I answered her and she repeated the Catholic act of contrition word for word. Her breathing became shallow and she described her death. But the woman is Jewish. When she came out of hypnosis, she did not recognize any of the words she had just uttered. She had never heard of the act of contrition which Catholics used to atone for their sins. Abdominal pain was gone. Her menstrual periods came back that evening and that pain had never occurred. Record. The spiritual component of past life therapy is also a great healer. As patients personally experience that they do not die when their bodies die, they realize that they, in fact, have a divine nature that transcends birth and death. The will to live to be healed and the faith that healing can will take place will often increase with it. Patients learn of the higher power within all of us that helps us orchestrate our lives to learn and to teach our godlike potential. They become less anxious, more relaxed. More of the energy can be directed towards the healing process and away from fear and suffering. Past life therapy also seems to develop those traits of hardiness that seems to correlate with good health, including increased resistance to the debilitating effects of chronic illnesses and with strong immune functioning. It promotes peacefulness and the tendency to accept obstacles as challenges and adventures. Patients who have undergone past life therapy to alleviate physical problems become more hopeful and they live life more joyfully, joyously and fully. They're more independent, they sleep better, the depression lifts. Dana came to a small workshop of mine complaining of a problem with her throat. Her throat felt lumpy, she often choked. She had frequent respiratory infections and she was losing her voice. In a group regression, she had a vividly dramatic memory of a male lifetime in the Italian Renaissance in which she had been stabbed in the throat, although she did not know why she had been murdered. After this workshop experience, Dana made an appointment to see me privately. In the office, she related a history of being abused by both parents when she was a child. In hypnosis, she again relived Italian Renaissance death experiences, and this time it became less dramatic. There's a typical reaction. Each time a past life is relived, the emotion becomes less intense and the possibility of gaining insights from the experiences is increased. During this session, Dana learned that she had been murdered because she had known an important secret and others were afraid she could reveal. 
she had not re revealed this information, fearing the consequences of speaking out. This time, Dana continued on the life review stage after the death was re-experienced. Here, she learned that she will experience throat con uh, constriction and put herself in danger if she does not speak the truth. At the next session, Dana entered a life that appeared to take place on a Pacific island, possibly Polynesia or Hawaii. In that lifetime, Dana was a young woman with psychic abilities who was absorbed with tribal dancing. She was so absorbed, but then she was left to watch a fire. She neglected it. When the fire burned out of control, she neglected to warn her people. The community she lived in was consequently desired, uh, destroyed. One of the victims was a woman who was an abusive mother, who is her abusive mother in this lifetime. The theme had record. She had not communicated when she could have. After these sessions, Dana's throat symptoms improved. Moreover, she gained, moreover, she gained an important, wider perspective about her mother. She was able to step back and see her mother as someone with whom she had been playing different roles in many lifetimes. As a result, she was able to detach from the tyranny of the abusive situation or in the present lifetime, one that had wounded her so deeply. This part of her past life began to assume a smaller and less influential role in her present. Dana also learned that she needed to speak the truth, no matter what, whether she was in an abusive situation or a minor life detail, that secrecy is harmful and hurtful. The healing process that occurs during regression sessions is not always all-encompassing. Sometimes it is a simple matter of discovering the past physical origin of a present physical pain. A patient who does not need to explore complex Emotional issues as part of the process of current physical discomfort will not do during past therapy. The healing can be simple and direct. Chronic headaches are one of several conditions that respond particularly well to past life therapy. My wife Carol had been suffering premenstrual migraine, headaches for many years. Every month, like clockwork, she would develop severe and disabling migraines and she would often have to rest for a day or two until the pain and nausea subsided. In addition, a neck injury suffered in the automatic accident in 1976 not only exacerbated these headaches but also resulted in a similar migraine whenever she served a ball on the tennis court or made certain types of overhead movements with her right arm. The menstrual periods and the overhead motions invariably precipitated a migraine headache. Gynecologists and neurologists had told her that nothing could cure the problem, that only medication could ease the pain. In the late summer of 1988, Carol had a series of particularly severe migraine headaches. Meditation, which sometimes lessened her pain, did not alleviate the severity of these headaches. She did not want to use narcotic-like drugs, so she made an appointment with a hypnotherapist to learn hypnotic techniques to deal with the pain. I once tried to hypnotize Carol, but our closures interfered with the distance needed in a therapist-patient relationship. Carol had no expectation as she dreamily drifted into a trance state. After a period of relaxation and stress reduction, the therapist told her to ask herself why she was getting these headaches. A scene flashed before her eyes, and Carol suddenly watched herself running through a mob. She was a poor peasant male who was wearing filthy brown or black burlap clothes. This time was about... 1,000 years ago, and the scene was taking place somewhere in Central Europe. The mob caught up to her and began to club her, pushing her for unacceptable belief and hearsays. A blow caught her above the left eye, the very spot where the pain from the migraine was most severe. Suddenly, in his hypnotherapist's office, Carol began to experience that stabbing pain over the left eye, a pain that rapidly spread to the entire left side of her head. Carol knew that she had died as a result of this clubbing. The therapist said, she no longer need this pain, let it go. Immediately the pain disappeared. There is no way to prove whether this was an actual past life memory or not, but Carol had not had an incapacitating migraine headache ever since that session. Fantasies and daydreams do not cure such severe symptoms. Past life therapy very often does. Tricia was a 28-year-old engineer suffering from temporomandibular joint pain, TMI, TMJ, migraines, and a stiff neck. She recalled a death experience somewhere in a valley of Asia Minor in the year 893 BC. In that lifetime, she had been a man living a very peaceful and happy life, which related to me in great detail. 
But I asked her to look at her feet, to describe the sandals which she was wearing. She lived in a cave in Greece this time when I asked her to describe her footwear. Tricia was wearing sandals of a completely different style. Tricia described a warrior standing over her with a spear. The warrior then speared her face. As she experienced her death, Tricia told me the pain she had felt then was very similar to the migraine pain she experienced in this lifetime. Tricia's neck stiffness and TMJ improved gradually and significantly after her regression. And her migraines have diminished, fearing freeing her from the need to take medication for them. This ability to be free from medicines can be important as relief from the pain itself. Alberto, a physician specializing in radiology, had suffered from severe back pain and spasms for many years. Medical treatments had been unsuccessful in alleviating the excruciating pain if Alberto had not been such a strong and positive personality and character structure. He could not have he had not had an a strong and positive personality and character structure, he could have been easily succumbed to the addictive potential of the potent pain-killing medicines he required during flare-ups of his back pain. Falling into a relaxed stand state, Alberto uncovered two past lives where she had suffered mortal injuries to his back. One was especially revealing. In this lifetime, as a soldier several hundred years ago, Alberto recalled dying painfully on a European battlefield and he re-experienced the numbing pain of his fatal wound. The location of this wound corresponded exactly to the source of his current low-level uh, low back pain. After the regression, Alberto's back pain and spasms quickly improved. Once again, mind and body had come together to facilitate helping healing. In Alberto's case, the result was more focused than in many of the other cases described above. Alberto came to have physical pain relief and he achieved his goal. Although Alberto's results were so specific, they still influenced his life in a broad way. As a result of his pain, past life therapy, Alberto was able to stop taking the powerful painkillers that had previously provided his only source of relief. Betty was another patient who used regression therapy to end a dependence on machines. And med so and and uh, end a uh, dependence on med medicines. Betty had been afflicted with asthma, allergies, and a weakness of her respiratory system since childhood. She required injections of adrenaline and doses of steroids and other medicines to control her attacks and symptoms. She seemed destined to live out of the rest of her life, plagued by these terrible bouts of asthma, dependent on medicines just to breathe. Betty's personality and life circumstances were different from Alberto's and she had been addicted to nasal decongestant spray. During regression therapy, Betty began choking and gasping for air. She related to me that she was being burned at the stake sometime in the late Middle Ages. The spoke was overpowering, her lungs were being seared. Betty eventually floated out of her body, hovering around it and the flames to watch the gruesome destruction of her body in the flames. After the regression session, her asthma improved almost immediately. I still marvel that such a severe, life-paralyzing, lifelong system, symptom could resolve literally overnight. It seemed miraculous to me, yet it did, along with most of her other allergies. After experience, Betty quickly stopped using the addictive decongestant, experiencing only minimal rebound stuffiness. Not only did the Affliction disappeared, but the quality of her life improved immeasurably. Her fears diminished markedly. Betty is not the only patient of mine who had healed herself or himself of chronic allergies or respiratory problems through recall of a death experience that included the searing of the lungs suffocation. Like migraine headaches, asthma, respiratory infections, and allergies are physical conditions in the current lifetime that seem to have origins in suffering experiencing in previous lifetimes. Past physical trauma seems to have present physical residue. Lassie was a high school teacher in the late 40s with a long history of asthma and fear of water. During her first session, she went directly to the death scene and found herself as a girl of eight or nine, falling off a cliff and drowning. Lassie recalled how her most vivid experience of this drowning was sensory one. One of the cold, coldness and surprising deaths of the water. Very quickly, she began to float peacefully out of her body. Next, Lassie found herself recalling a life in which she had been a young slave 
girl of 11 or 12 in the ancient Near East. In this lifetime, her task was to help make bricks out of wet hay or straw. Lacey died in an age when a wagon of wet straw fell over her and she suffocated. As she recalled the death experience, Lacey related the agony, pain, panic and terror she had felt when she was found that she could no longer take a breath. This experience was quite different from the first one. Since that session, her asthmatic condition improved considerably to the extent that the first time in her lifetime, she was able to go through an entire allergy season without taking any medications or experiencing any symptoms. And an intensive care unit nurse alleviated her respiratory allergies with the past life memory that began to well up spontaneously during her vacation. Annie was exploring Paris for the first time with her husband when she began to feel anxious for no apparent reason. As anxiety increased, she also realized that she somewhat also knew her way around the historic district she was exploring. She could easily navigate in twists and turns. Suddenly, as she turned a corner and looked down in the small square at the end of the street, Anne had to experience a deja vu. She saw herself being burned at the stake several hundred years ago for psychic abilities, her healing abilities. Anne subsequently came into the office for hypnosis therapy in order to explore the experience. In the structured therapy setting, Anne remembered the scorching heat and how she had died inhaling the thick, suffocating smoke that arose, with, that arose within her. Anne's recurrent respiratory allergies had not been her impetus for entering therapy. The spontaneous memory had, but this registered nurse later reported to me that the allergies had shown a marked improvement as a result of exploring this memory. Another of Dr. Jarman's patients, a 50-year-old female executive, began hypnosis to trace origins of respiratory problems. Her name was Elizabeth. Now I want you to go to an old scene. I want you to go back to the first time you had that problem where you couldn't breathe, the feeling she couldn't catch your breath. As you see that scene, describe what you see. Elizabeth began to tremble. She grimaced. There it is, Dr. Jamin said. I want you to look down at your feet. What are you wearing on your feet? Dark shoes, she reported as child's voice. Old lady shoes. Doctor probed further. Where are you? What are you doing? Sewing. But I know what's going to happen. What's th There's going to be a fire, Elizabeth stammered and began coughing. Her breathing began rapid and shallow, smoldering the rags over there in the corner. Elizabeth described herself as a 16-year-old girl named Nora who lived in Sterling, Massachusetts in 1879. Nora worked as a sh shirt factory. She was deaf, could not speak, and wore braces on her legs. She had been smoking in this factory since age 12. Smoke, flames, she coughed. They're trying to put it out. They're hitting it. They're beating it. Someone threw water on it, but there's not enough water. She cried. Her breathing became very labored. Everybody's trying to get out. How about you? Are you trying to get out too, Dr. Jarman said? I can't. They won't let me. I can't. Why do you need help? I can't walk. I have braces on my legs. Elizabeth cried, gasping out for air. They don't even see me. I'm there. I can't breathe. I can't stand it anymore. She gulped. Suddenly she went limp. After several silent, tense minutes, Okshaman asked to describe the scene. Is the fire still raging? Yes, I'm resting. I am dead. Still sick. Have to rest. Some need more rest than others, but it's okay now. It's peaceful. Elizabeth's respiratory problems disappeared after she experienced her death in the fire. She lost her lifelong fear of suffocating. Her values and her life system changed dramatically. All these cases, so many show that there is more than increased strength deriving from the clear awareness of our inherent divinity and the higher power guiding each of us throughout our lives. There is more than the immune system boost from living life more joyously and complete with hardness and power. There is also recovery through understanding the true root cause of our symptoms, our fears, our impairments, our dependencies. When the core reasons are seen and experienced, understood and resolved, the symptoms disappear, the illnesses improve, the splinter has been removed and the pain is gone, the recommend drama has finally ended and the dance is over, there is no need to project, to defend, to anesthetize, to use drugs or to be sick anymore. Perhaps this is why therapy con conducted in this state from this higher perspective seems to be extremely effective. Learning occurs at a highly accelerated pace, sometimes regression to childhood or a past life is not even necessary. When your therapy is done on a relaxed, meditative, higher state, learning, acceptance, assimilation, improvement frequently takes place quite rapidly. 
the benefits of the higher state can be experienced in forms of therapy other than past life therapy. I have been incorporating some of the elements into traditional psychotherapy with some of my non-regression patients. I tell the patients to gently close in her eyes and to take a few deep breaths, letting the body completely relaxed. We then converse therapeutically. The patient's vision is directed inward instead of outward. There are many few distracting sights and thoughts. Concentration is focused. The subconscious mind can be accessed and influenced in a positive healing manner. Frequently, the patient experiences visual images that accompany thoughts and emotions we are reviewing. These images seem to be very important and to be directly directed towards the symptoms or blocks the patient is experiencing. We discuss and integrate the meaning of these images, whether they are symbolic or actual memory fragments, learning and clinical improvement are enhanced. Evelyn had a particularly violent form of premenopausal breast cancer, which was meta metastasized. Only two years before her own diagnosis was made, Evelyn experienced a gr severe grief reaction to her sister's death from cancer when she came to see me. Evelyn had already been through numerous courses of radiation, radiation and chemotherapy. She had undergone a surgical menopause in order to negate hormonal influences on her cancer. Evelyn was despondent, despondent and losing hope, and the clinical course was heading down, downhill. In a hypnotic state, she patched up some old family problems. In this hypnotized, superconscious state, Evelyn met her deceased sister. They talked, they hugged, they expressed their love for each other, and knew that they would always be bonded together in some way. Evelyn realized that her sister was not dead and she had merely left her body behind. Next, Evelyn visualized lights like laser beams, zapping her tumors, cleansing her body, adding a tuber charge to her immune system. Spirit guides came to help with the laser zapping. Evelyn began to improve. She gained weight and went into remission. She became more hopeful fighting to live. Her grief and depression rapidly decreased, disappeared. She felt joy and peace re-enter her life. Was her improvement due to this hypnosis and the healing visualization? The time course suggests a correlation. There were also other factors. Her oncologists were able to use higher amounts of chemotherapy medicines because she was feeling better and stronger. Perhaps the added medicine. Perhaps the added medicines were the crucial factor. Yet, without the hypnosis and visualization, she could not have tolerated the increased doses of the powerful chemotherapy drugs. In a study report in the Los Lancet, the prestigious British medical journal, medical researchers found that a combination of diet and exercise and the practice of stress reduction techniques can reverse blockages <clears throat> in, in, in coronary artery disease. Changes in diet and exercise alone were not sufficient to reverse heart disease. Stress reduction was a necessary factor more important than originally believed. Dr. Claude Lenfant, a researcher at the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute in, in Bethsaida, Maryland, stated that these lifestyle changes can begin to reverse even severe coronary artery disease after only one year using the use of cholesterol-lowering drugs. Relaxation techniques are very important. This finding suggests that conventional recommendations may be enough to prevent heart disease, but not to reverse it. Commented Dr. Dean Ornish, who coordinated the study. Another study of more than 1,000 heart attack victims. Researchers from Stanford University presented a report at the International Congress of Behavioral Medicine in Uppsala, Sweden. They found that anxiety, fearfulness, hostility, and anger are psychological traits that predispose people to second heart attacks. Interestingly, anxiety and fearfulness seem to be more harmful to women whose hostility and anger are more harmful to men. Relaxation, visualization, imagery, and regression are used in order to eliminate stress, tension, fears, phobias. In a holistic way, the health ramifications seemed endless. We need more research into the mind, brain, immune system, body continuum. How do attitudes in particular states of mind help to prevent 
ameliorate and sometimes cure addictions, chronic illnesses, infections, cancers, heart disease, autoimmune disorders, and other diseases. It has been my experience that many of these doctors as well, regression therapy and hypnotic visualizations can transform the mind to reach these healing states. These methods can be used in conjunction with traditional medical approaches and medicines. They're not mutually exclusive by any means, as the treatment of many of the patients in this chapter demonstrates. Here is my final example. Frances is a woman in her mid-40s who came to me to work on some relationship issues. She had, been, she had also been recently diagnosed as having two masses in her right breast. The breast masses had been definitely identified and and go at different stages of the menstrual of the fluid filled cyst that can come up at different stages of the menstrual cycle i conducted the preliminary interview nothing noting francis psychological and physical histories we made a second appointment on the way of her second appointment francis arrived in an agitated state since our first session we had gone to see the oncologist about her breast lumps which were possibly cancerous the oncologist had tried to perform a needle biopsy on the breast masses but Frances had fainted her doctors had decided they wanted to remove remove the two masses surgically and Frances was very anxious not only about the possibility that they would prove to be cancerous but also because she had once had a bad experience under the general anesthesia, similar to uh, near-death experiences, which she was afraid of to repeat. During a session, we did visualization work with healing lights. Just Evelyn and I did, as many of the patients who have done. I gave Francis an audio tape with a relaxation and healing meditation and re requested, suggested that she do the same work at home. She made a third appointment for the following week. Francis had quite an astounding story to tell. In the third appointment, she had arrived to have surgery as planned early on the Monday morning. And as part of the preparation of surgery, a radiologist had run a final breast x-ray. <coughs> when he looked at the film, the lumps had been present on the previous workshop, taken only three days before they were completely gone. The startled doctor immediately scheduled Francis for an emergency mammogram. Same results, no lumps. As Francis lay on the operating table with an IV in her arm, a radiologist announced the results of his surgeon, which while also showing the man the data. Francis's surgeon told her radiologist that he wanted to operate anyway on the basis of the last set of x-rays. The two physicians proceeded to have disagreement right in front of the sedated patient who was waiting on the table to have surgery. The surgeon was re recalcitrant and refused to believe the new evidence, even though his highly qualified associate, the radiologist, saw that two separate and highly reliable tests had shown that Francis's breast lumps had disappeared. Finally, Francis took matters into her own hands. There aren't any lumps there, so I'm going home. Later, Francis sent me the following message in the holiday greeting card. Thank you for the meditation regression tape. I am living proof that the healing light works. Experience a miracle today. When I went to the hospital for my... Uh, Lumpet to me, both lumps had disappeared from Friday to Monday. I've been 100% healed. Amazing, powerful stuff, that white light. Now, all of my friends and relatives are believers too, and what copies of the tape? All the skeptics and doubters, including my husband, are beginning to listen to the values of medita meditation, etc. I will always remember the Hanukkah as a turning point in my life, and I will always celebrate the Festival of Lights with a new meaning. I look forward to even more wonderful experiences towards health. Wow, isn't that miraculous? Yeah, Sonia, absolutely. Francis's experiences may be much less uncommon than people think. The transformational power of the mental attitudes induced by hypnotic path of regression and visualization can be of real practical use to traditional medical practitioners. Here are safe and strong healing forces, forces with no side effects, because these forces are basically spiritual and intuitive in nature. This is holistic, truly holistic medicine. Wonderful. And I'm also living proof of so many affirmations and healing lights and what all and what not. Why? Because it is absolutely beautiful to heal your body. Louis Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, is one magical thing. I was scheduled for a hernia operation the next day and what happened was there was no hernia. 
because in that night I was chanting the affirmation. One night, she had a Friday to Monday, I had just one day to another. That's the power of healing. That's the power of visualization. That's the power of belief. May I ask who's is one, two, double, three? I would request you to have your real names. So it's very important to have the name, what, what is there. This one, two, double, three is not known to me. So next time when I see something which is not known to me, I'm going to be taking the person off the session, even though you may be a registered participant. So please be careful. I, who's this? Can you tell me? Yeah, you can raise your, you can unmute yourself. Ma'am, I think I've changed my phone um, to a new phone. So okay. maybe it is me or what? I'm not sure. I have to check then. It's Jyoti. Yeah, Jyoti. I, I get got your voice. So yeah, the name was one two double three. So please oh, change okay. the Zoom session name to so Jyoti because it's always nicer to have your real name. Okay, I was so unaware. I'm so sorry, ma'am. No, no, that's fine. That's fine, Jyoti. Okay. That, that's fine. And once again, everybody, thank you for being with me in this journey to heal Serena, to send her off. She is now the light. And I thank all of you for your healing for her. Uh, it, it was tumultuous for me to come down yesterday back to Delhi to leave the bachas and but take care. life must go on. I'm embracing it. And thank you once again, everybody, for your love, for your kindness, for your affection. And I'm going to see you in the gap tomorrow morning at um, at 6. But again, I want to reiterate. So now that we have finished 90 plus days of knowing the soul's journey, it is very, 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 very imperative that all of us go into ourselves with a soham. You have no idea how powerful soham is. When you start practicing again and again diligently, you will see new channels opening up for each one of you. And that, my dear friends, is a real true blue example. Ritu, I wanted to ask you, did you check with the, for the Akashic Records? Because oh, it's very important. Uh, yeah, I will do this. Um, I got a root canal, so I couldn't, can't speak much. You don't have to call her up, just message her and say, I'm from Prachi's Morning Soul Group and we are about so many people and what's the package and can you do a session for us? Because I have told her that the dates will be given to somebody else. I will stop. I will speak to and her. And in case you are not well, let Jyoti handle it. <clears throat> Any one of you need to handle it. You don't have to do it alone. If you're not comfortable, can Jyoti handle it? Because we talked about it a week ago. Um, I, I have a function in house. So three I will days are really busy. I will do it. I will call her today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to ask uh, in the manifestation, uh, sometimes manifestation work like for some people and for some people it's not working. So, uh, when, when, so when manifestation operates from a law of fear, anxiety, hopelessness or helplessness or frustration or anxiety like fata fat ho jai, okay this is the time I'm giving then it doesn't come true. Because manifestation works when your thoughts are in order to what you're supposed to receive. For example, today I want to be, say, 54 kilos. And if I manifest being 54 kilos out of a state of, then I will not be able to come to 54. But if I feel 54, I'm stretching beautifully, I'm being so light, I'm being so loved, then it will come true. So manifestation is a seven-state process and the process has been explained time and again. It's on YouTube, in the sessions before, in the magic book. Go through it again. You have to integrate all of your senses and then manifest. Then it's more powerful. And the second question about, the, we were talking about the migraine headaches and all which goes in uh, healing and past life preparation. I have been doing that and uh, it has come down a little bit. Uh, the intensity of the headache has come down. Headache is there. These people have been working with Dr. Brian Wise. There's a difference between Dr. Brian Wise and me doing it, na? or Vasudha doing it. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the quality of the patients also, Ritu. How easy are they to surrender the pain or how easy they are to hold it with the fears? If we operate out of a world of fears, we are attracting a lot of problems in our life. Mm -hmm. So we have to be ready to surrender. Okay. If we're ready to surrender something that is no longer working for us, it has to leave us. Any disease, anything in the excess in the body, it will definitely go. We have surrendered. I've surrendered it. Maybe it will take time. More, more, more past life regression has to be done. Actually. Do that. And surrendering should be done on a full moon and manifestation should be done on new moon. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I've been learning from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So please do that. 
and I am yeah. wanting to start these sessions in person of the moon. Let's see when that occurs. Hoping for December. Pata nahi hoga ki nahi. Too soon. I got pretty sidelined 15 days because of Sunena. Dekhte. Kuch toh sahi niklega. Jyoti, aapka hand up. You want to say something? Oh, no, no. By mistake. I'm so sorry. Okay. okay, everybody. Lots of love and light. I'm going to see you tomorrow in, in the morning session 6 o'clock. Until then, have a wonderfully blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.